So a very warm welcome to you all here, especially those who have joined us via the YouTube link. We meet in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. The grace of God has appeared, training us to renounce God's ways and worldly desires, and in this present age to live a life that is worthy of the calling we have received. I we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus has sacrificed himself for us to set us free from things. Therefore, let us ask for God's help to turn our lives around, maintain loyalty and justice, and wait continually for our God. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins, and restore in you the image of his glory, to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God in the highest. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. So let us pray. O God, who by the leading of a star manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth, mercifully grant that we, who know you now by faith, May at last we hold your glory face to face, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 60, beginning at verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes, and look around. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant, your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because of the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah, those from Sheba, shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Today's psalm is Psalm 72. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the needy and crush the oppressor. 
May he live while the sun endures, and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers the water of the earth. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. May he have dominion from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. May his foes bow down before him and his enemies lick the dust. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 3, beginning at verse 13. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Jesus Christ. Let those of us then who are mature be of the same mind. And if you think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at his rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea. For so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gold, frankincense, and myrrh as gifts. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A husband and wife were waiting to check in at the airport when the husband turned to his wife and said, Darling, I wish I had brought the piano. Why on earth would you wish that, she said. We've already got six bags. Yes, I know, said the husband, but the tickets were on top of the piano. <laughs> <laughs> I read that the average adult forgets three key facts of events every single day. Fifteen million people will forget to drink their tea about the same will forget where they have left their keys. Twelve million will go to the shops and forget what they wanted. And again, the same will forget about the wet washing they left in the machine. Pin numbers, passwords, charging our mobile, and the worst of all, those who forgot to buy a lottery ticket only to find out that their numbers came up that week. And there were ten of them. Can you imagine their horror? So letting our tea go cold, where we put our keys, what we went to the shops for, our age, a family birthday, locking the car, putting the toilet seat down, turning off the tap, where we parked the car, watering the plants. Just ten things that we forget, and I'm sure that you could tell me a whole lot more. I guess that most people, though, would like to forget 2020. After all, it's not been a very nice year 
for so many people, though that won't be the case for everyone. Throughout 2020, new babies were born, people got married, new homes were bought, and lives were changed for the better. The author Stephen King said, Writers remember everything, especially the hurts. Strip a writer to their birthday suit, point to the scars, and they will tell you the story of every single one of them. A little talent, he says, is a nice thing to have if you want to be a writer. But the only real requirement is the ability to remember the story of every scar. 2020 has so many scars, so many stories. In our second reading that Puki gave us, we heard the words, I do not consider myself to have yet taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So can both the Apostle Paul and Stephen King be right? The need to forget and to remember. Matthew is the only one of the four gospel writers who gives this colourful story of the wise men from the East bearing gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came from the East to Jerusalem Magi, saying, Where is he that has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the East, and have come to worship him. A few years ago, I went to Cologne and I saw what is believed to be the final resting place of our Magi. The three kings, which we now call Melchior, Caspar, and Balthazar. As I reflected on the birth story, looking at their gold sarcophagus, I couldn't help but recall the funny story that if there had been three wise women who had sought the newly born Jesus, they would have first asked for directions, arrived on time, helped deliver the baby, made a casserole, and bought nappies as gifts. The truth is, the eminent visitors were not kings at all. They were Babylonian astrologers from Iraq. But like you, I had lots of Christmas cards this year, many of them depicting the typical scene that all of us imagine. The stable, the cattle, the shepherds, and the wise men all surrounding the newborn Jesus. But the wise men were not there that night, nor did they arrive on the twelfth night. We can't be sure exactly when they arrived, but what we can determine due to various passages in the New Testament is that they arrived at least 40 days after Jesus was born, but before he was two years old. I don't know if any of you saw the Christmas star on the 21st of December in the sky or on the internet, which occurred as Jupiter, known in the ancient world as the King of Planets, and Saturn crossed paths, causing a bright light in the sky. It has been suggested that this was in fact what the Magi saw in 4 BC, as in that year NASA tells us that there was a triple conjunction of those two planets in the constellation of Leo, which is also interesting as Leo was symbolic of the tribe of Judah, the tribe that Messiah would come from. All of this is interesting, but how do we piece together a light in the sky, a group of astrologers from Iraq, and the birth of a Jewish boy in Bethlehem? Well, again, we have to turn to the scriptures because there is only one place in the Old Testament that will enable us to slot all of these things together, and we find it in Daniel chapter 9. You remember, I'm sure, the story of Daniel and the lion's den, the king Nebuchadnezzar and his disturbing dreams, which his magicians and wise men were unable to interpret. Of how, because Daniel had interpreted the dreams of Nebuchadnezzar's servants in prison, he was drawn to the king's attention. Well, because of Daniel's intervention and his ability to interpret Nebuchadnezzar's dreams, he was made the head of the school of Babylonian astrologers. But still we ask, what has this to do with our wise men, the star of Bethlehem, and their journey to Jerusalem? Well, as Daniel begins to write his story, God begins to speak, 
And we read in Daniel that the angel Gabriel tells Daniel about the coming of a king, the Messiah. And he even gives us the date of his arrival. For Daniel tells us that after 483 years, after the decree to build Jerusalem occurs, Messiah will be born. And so, 600 years after Daniel writes this down, our friends the Magi see a bright star in the sky, perhaps the alignment of Jupiter and Saturn in the constellation of Leo, making it the King of Kings. And remembering what their head of astrologers said, the Messiah would be born in Judea, they head to Jerusalem to the king, asking, where is he that is born, king of the Jews? Fascinating, yes. But what has this to do with us now as we emerge from 2020, a year that we would rather forget? Well, it tells us just how important it is to look back and to remember so that we may journey forwards. In our second reading, Paul urges us to forget what is behind. But his word more literally translated means to neglect. And that's important because forgetting the past is hard, if not impossible. But neglecting its power to hurt us as we move forwards is not. 2020 will be a scar upon the world for many, many years to come. But let's not allow it to determine our future. 2020 was also the year we saw again a Bethlehem star calling us to look forward as those major ideas 2,000 years ago. The prize that Paul was looking to was wholeness. It was completeness. It was the ability to live in and gain life through the light of the world, the King of Kings. The Eucharist is central to our faith because it is the means by which we are made whole. It is the means by which we are able to move forward. It cancels the stain of the past, drawing us into the light of God's forgiveness and peace, enabling us to journey alongside him. The Magi brought Jesus gifts, which is why we do the same today, presenting presents to our loved ones at Christmas. But they didn't last forever, and neither were the things given to us a week ago. The gift, however, that is Jesus does. I watched the film Ben-Hur on New Year's Day. It was the one where the wise men continued to walk with Jesus throughout his life and is there at his crucifixion, which I think is a lovely depiction to add because it relates the importance of Christmas not just being a single event, but one that carries on and is a life event. The Apostle Paul knew that he hadn't arrived. He was a work in progress. He didn't consider himself to have got to the place where he knew everything about Jesus, nor was he walking in the fullness of him. He recognised that God was still shaping him, changing and pruning him each day. He probably acknowledged all of his faults every day, hoping, aiming perhaps to resolve and to change and to become a better believer. And now he says the same to us. We might not be where we ought to be, we might not be where we want to be, but that we are pressing on, that we continue to follow the star of light leading us to the King of Kings, to our Lord Jesus, is the whole point. Paul often reminds us of his failure, and I imagine there are so many things that he just couldn't get over. His stoning to death of Stephen, his treatment of so many of his brothers and sisters in the church, the animosity between him and St. Peter, but Paul chose not to dwell on them, not to live in the disaster of them. Like me, you have probably made some New Year's resolutions. Perhaps they are to neglect past hurt, past offences, past failure. To not rehearse in your mind all the negativity which stunts your growth as a human being and as a Christian. Perhaps to live better, live simpler, live leaner to be more generous and kind. And I pray that God will give each one of us the grace to accomplish those resolutions. But if there is one resolution that we should all make this year, it is in the light of today's reading and this epiphany time, that we will follow the star, the leading of all that draws us to Christ, and to take as many with us 
as his was. We love the story of the wise men coming to Jesus with their gifts. But what, I wonder, will be your gift to Jesus this 2021? Amen. So let us stand as we affirm together our faith with the words of the Apostles. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. The whole universe belongs to you, and yet you care for each one of us. You come to us in love to be our saviour and our friend. You have chosen us to be your people and given us of your Holy Spirit. We give you thanks and praise. We share with all who continue to give thanks for the coming of Jesus into the world. We remember before you those who proclaim the gospel by living lives of holiness and goodness. We, prepare for those, we pray for those preparing for confirmation and all who are seeking to know you better. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We bring before you rulers of people, politicians and leaders of nations, we remember all who are striving to bring peace and unity to man, humankind. We think especially today of rescue workers, of ambulance workers and firefighters. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks that you care for us and that we all belong to your family. We pray for our own parents, families, and friends. May we know that you are with us and love us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You are our Redeemer and are with us in our troubles. We remember all whose lives are endangered at this time, all who are fearful and anxious. We pray to you for those who are ill at home or in hospital. We trust in your love and power. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You save us from destruction and have chosen us to be one with you in your kingdom. We ask you to bless our loved ones departed with your love and grace. Merciful Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given the human hands of men. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed, Lord. Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. The Lord is here. Lift, lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and All honour and praise be yours always and everywhere. Mighty Creator, ever living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For at this time we celebrate your glory, made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, the King of all the world was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and say our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine, may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave him thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave him thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this for you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our love. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Accept through him our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and prayers. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, Renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, and as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we will share in one bread. Lamb of God, if you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace.
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his Son. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Lord God of the bright splendor of the nations, may who we with you with your wise men have been drawn by your light, discern the glory of your presence in your Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord.